Hey guys, I'm Nick and on this episode of The Scram Line, I'm going to show you how to make this amazing zombie brains cake. Look at that cake. It is so realistic. It looks amazing. This is going to be the hit of your next Halloween party. Kids are going to love it. Adults are going to say, ew. I've seen this thing on top of wedding cakes. I mean, it looks so, so cool and it's so easy to make. You have no idea. But I'm going to show you guys right now how to make it. Now, I'm going to go over the ingredients so we can get started. Over here, I've got my dry ingredients. I've got some oil, eggs, cream cheese frosting, and you can find the recipe for that on thescramline.com. Buttermilk, vinegar, red food dye, and in my mixer, I have my butter and my sugar. And what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna cream our butter and sugar together. So you're looking for a nice white, fluffy creaminess. So start it off on slow, and when you can see that there's a bit of crumbliness starting to form, then you can start to put it up on high, and it should take about five minutes before you've got it nice and creamy. Okay, so we've got our butter and our sugar creamed. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add our oil. Give that a mix until it's combined. Okay, so next we're gonna add our eggs one at a time. Just mix it on low until your eggs look combined and then just add the next egg. Okay, so now that those ingredients have been mixed in, what I'm gonna do in this bowl, I'm gonna add my buttermilk, some red food diet and my vinegar. Give that a mix until we get a nice red colour. You can see that that's gone nice and beautiful and red. Okay, so to our stand mixer, we're going to add that red buttermilk and vinegar. And we're going to add all of our dry ingredients. We're going to mix that on low. Now what I'm going to do just before it's finished mixing, I'm just going to scrape down the bowl just so we can grab all of those dry ingredients that might not be getting mixed in properly. Okay, so now we can see everything is mixed in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up to high for 30 seconds and then we're ready to put it in my spring form pan that I've lined with baking paper down the bottom and pop it in the oven which has been preheating on 180 degrees. Okay guys, so my cake was in the oven for about 30 minutes. I took it out, I waited about 20 minutes and took it out of the pan and then I popped it in the fridge, let it cool completely and now we're up to this stage where I'm just gonna get a sharp knife. Now you can use a serrated, anything as long as it's sharp and what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully cut our cake in half, just twisting. Now you want to let most of the knife do the work, that's why you want to have a sharp knife. And what we're going to do is very roughly, we're going to put a bit of cream cheese frosting in the center. Now it doesn't matter if you have crumbs because you're not going to see it, it's going to be covered in zombie brains anyway. Now I'm just going to slice a little bit of the top of that cake so we can have a nice flat surface. So we're just going to sandwich those two pieces together, cover it a little bit more in some a thin layer of cream cheese frosting just so that our brains have something to stick onto. And just a little bit around the sides as well. Filling in those gaps in the middle of the cake. Nice and evenly around the sides. Okay, so with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes. Let that cheese harden a little bit. In the meantime, we're gonna make our marshmallow fondant, which is gonna form our brains. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that next. Okay guys, so to make the marshmallow fondant, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a microwave safe bowl, you're gonna put marshmallow in it, you wanna pop it in there for 30 seconds, give it a mix, 20 seconds, give it a mix, 10 seconds, mix, and then after that, every 10 seconds, give it a mix, because you don't wanna burn your marshmallow. So basically what you're looking for is something that's nice and melted. What I'm gonna do is pop it in my stand mixer, and we're gonna pop a little bit of icing sugar in there at a time, allow it to thicken, and then once it's too thick for the mixer, I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna knead it. Okay, so for the next bit, what you're gonna to need to do is knead your fondant. So it's been in the mixer and the mixer is not able to mix it anymore because it's starting to get a bit too thick. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a bit of your icing sugar, pop it on your bench, clean hands and oil spray, and that's gonna stop the fondant from sticking to your hands. So you wanna spray them well, and you might end up doing it more than once as well, because this stuff is sticky. Okay, so basically, you're treating it pretty much the same as bread dough, just kneading it. But every time you can feel it starting to get sticky on the palm of your hand, just add a little bit more icing sugar and keep kneading. Okay, so our fondant is done, and what I'm gonna do 
cut a bit of plastic and wrap it up in some plastic, pop it away, and then we're gonna get started on our cake. This is the exciting part. This is my favorite part of making this cake because it just, it surprises me every single time I make it and it's gonna surprise you. So what we're gonna do is we've got our marshmallow fondant. Our cake has been sitting in the fridge. The cheese has set a little bit, which is good. That's what we're looking for. So basically what we're grabbing is a golf ball size piece of fondant. We're just gonna roll it up into a ball in our hands. Now, you just wanna use the palm of your hands to kind of roll it out. Now it doesn't matter if you have little bits of something in there, it all adds to the effect. Now we're gonna place this directly in the center of our cake, all across, and down the bottom we're just going to put it around. So one side to the left, one side to the right. So a brain is split into two, so that's what we're doing with our cake. We're splitting it into two parts so it looks a little bit more realistic. Now my advice for you guys is to jump onto Google and as gross as it is, research what brains look like because once you get an idea of what they look like, well then that's how you're able to achieve a more realistic effect. So basically, we're just rolling out our fondant into long pieces. You don't want to make them too thick, but you don't want to make them too thin. And if they're not even, that doesn't matter. It all adds to the effect. To make your brain, you're going to basically do a zigzag shape. And if your fondant is getting a little bit soft and it starts breaking, that's okay because this cake can look rough and still look really, really amazing. Now, if you have gaps that you can see, a little bit of icing underneath, that's okay, because what I'm gonna show you next is going to blow your socks off. What we're gonna do now is I've got some jam here which I've sifted so we can get rid of the seeds. That's raspberry jam that I've used. I put a little bit of extra red food dye in there just to make it a little bit redder and bring out that blood. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour it all over the cake using a pastry brush. I'm just gonna spread it around and you can see that it just gets into the little creases and in there and it makes it look shiny and it looks like like a brain it looks like a zombie brain and this is my zombie brain cake you're welcome so if you'd like the recipe for this zombie brain cake you're going to find it on thescranline.com if you'd like to follow me during the week and know what i'm up to you can do that on twitter facebook and instagram the links for those will be in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because there's lots of really cool episodes coming up soon. I'll see you guys on the next episode of The Scram Line.